Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Jeff, and I'm with Gear Audio. Uh, I know we've got some international uh, visitors today. So uh, just uh, for, for those of you that know, um, we uh, are the Canadian distributor for uh, Audio Press Box, along with a number of other uh, professional audio products like Meyer Sound and, and Digico and uh, Clearcom and uh, DPA microphones. Um, this is uh, one of the uh, one of the many webinars that uh, we've been doing weekly, and uh, we're very excited to uh, to include one about uh, Audio Press Box. Um, not always a commonly talked about item, but um, kind of like Intercom, I find it uh, very interesting and something that you definitely need to pay attention to because uh, when things don't go right, uh, it can be a huge problem. So. Um, We've got a number of units here today, all hooked up and plugged in in, in one form or fashion. And uh, we're going to have a look uh, at the different models and some of the very unique features that Audio Press Box has for these, uh, these units here. So um, feel free to ask any questions along the way. Um, Peter, my co-host, uh, is going to be uh, answering them and, uh, uh, and, and guiding me along. So uh, don't hesitate to, uh, to reach out. So. And uh, I believe we actually have two special guests on the call from, uh, from Audio Press Box uh, themselves, uh, uh, both Ivan and uh, Michaela, who will, they may chime in uh, when necessary as well, too. Hi, guys. Hello. So um, just going to get started here. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what a press box actually is and uh, have a look at why you need it and the idea behind it. But um, basically, it is a, it's a tool for professional audio um, folks to distribute um, at a very high quality and uh, a buffered way uh, the audio at press conferences, uh, presentations, other events, uh, basically in a situation where you need to generate multiple feeds for reporters, journalists, recorders, you know, newscasts, speakers, uh, anything like that. Uh, and, and most importantly, uh, I mean, this is kind of the fundamental idea behind it is to, uh, you know, to not have something like this happen and to avoid a situation uh, <laughs> with 20 microphones at, at all costs. So. Um, so what is a press box? Um, in situations, uh, you know, involving um, large scale government announcements, press conferences, anything along those lines, you know, we have the need to distribute audio from the speakers themselves, uh, potentially to a, uh, a local PA system, um, but also to uh, cameramen, to media uh, feeds, to uh, press people that are in the audience, and occasionally sometimes to uh, translation booths and uh, and uh, interpretation uh, sections and things like that. So um, the one fundamental piece that does that for us is, uh, is a press box. That's kind of the common uh, splitter that we will use to, to generate that. And to see that uh, you know, a bit more clearly here, um, this is kind of the traditional flow in a, in a typical uh, press conference or press situation, you know, with or without a, uh, an amplified, uh, you know, uh, background PA system. So we have a speaker, obviously, uh, feeding into a mixing console, and uh, we then take that feed from there uh, and find unique ways to distribute it um, with some of our uh, rack units, our expanders, um, throw down boxes. And from there, obviously, it goes off into um, the different forms of media and, uh, you know, out across the world as required. So Audio Press Box um, was created uh, by a company called uh, MediaTek uh, in 1994. Um, and uh, MediaTek is a, is a well-known company and, and they're actually a, uh, a user. And, you know, this product was born out of the necessity for going out and doing events and, you know, stumbling over these unique challenges when, um, uh, when trying to distribute audio and coming up with a solution that uh, not only worked for themselves, but was also scalable and something that they could provide uh, worldwide as well. Um, so, uh, uh, MediaTek is from Slovakia, and um, you know we're we're more than happy to uh, to represent them here in Canada. So, what are the considerations and things that you need to think about when you're buying a press box or, or looking to distribute audio? Um, obviously, the cost uh, that that usually is a big part of it, um, but you know, in my in my opinion, it should be you know on the list for sure, but definitely not a driving factor uh, because a lot of the time. Uh, the media that's flowing through this is, you know, uh, very uh, considerably important and uh, cost weighs a small part uh, in consideration for something not working properly. Uh, 
obviously the size and the distribution. Does it have enough channels? Uh, how many discrete feeds do we need? And, uh, and so on. Um, the performance, obviously, the quality of the audio that gets uh, that gets transmitted. That's a that's a base functionality that you know anything needs to uh, to provide. Um, and of course, the reliability and redundancy. And those are two things that uh, can be looked at a few different ways. But um, do you have a backup? Uh, you know what happens uh, what happens when um, you have a power outage and, and things like that? Do you have a way to uh, to keep this going at all costs? Resilience to problems too, and that's a big part. Um, that's one of the things that Audio Press Box has done a really good job at is uh, coming up with a number of solutions to uh, to hit every single possible thing uh, and cover off with a with a good uh, solid mechanism to to keep the audio flowing cleanly and uh, and keep it keep it there in general. Because at the end of the day, you really only get one chance to to capture this stuff. So you want to get it right because there's no uh, <laughs> there's no retakes in, in many of these cases. So why are press boxes unique? Uh, just in general, this is more of a general mechanism for looking at these kind of things. Um, one of the big things that uh, we look for, you know, is protection against uh, audio short circuits and things like that. So we have a number of different people plugging in devices, could be cameras, could be uh, recorders, handheld recorders, could be iPhones, uh, could be other devices, other mixing consoles, other feeds. And these all have very unique uh, audio properties. They all have different impedances. Um, and uh, it's very easy when sharing a signal like that to get buzzes, hums, ground, uh, ground loops, or things like that. So, um, you know, we have protection for those mechanisms that we'll, we'll come across in a little bit. Uh, obviously, the ability to support different audio uh, formats and different levels more so. Some cameras require microphone level only. Some devices and some recorders need to get a line level signal. Uh, and those are things we cover off in, in, in either case uh, very well. Um, a built-in battery. Um, you know, this is something that's a, a very unique uh, power consideration. Not only it allows you to go out and portably record without any kind of uh, local power, but it also allows you to do uh, to, to have a battery backup in case somebody does kick the power out by uh, by chance. So you're covered in both of those scenarios. And uh, obviously the, the ability to to withstand this and to be able to go out and throw these things into to any um, any situation and, and make it work. So from our side, um, we kind of split the press box style into a portable variant and a, a fixed variant. And um, uh, we'll look at a couple of different models of each of these. Uh, but first, we're going to look at the features that um, these guys have that are very unique to uh, uh, their lineup. And it's something that's common across uh, all of the units, both the portable and the, the fixed install. So, and these are the features that obviously uh, lend themselves to, uh, um, to the quality that we're speaking about. So with any one of these units, um, we obviously have a, a mic input, a line input, gain, um, phantom power, high pass. Uh, one very unique uh, thing that you'll see with these guys and, and very few others, uh, if not any others, is a built-in high pass and a compressor and limiter circuit. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit more about that after. Uh, Pre-fade listen, um, bus selections uh, to allow you to split the device and to do um, two different uh, outputs or two different signals. Um, this is great for multi-language situations and uh, to distribute to different areas. Um, an after fader listen option, um, a built-in oscillator as well. So we can test the feeds, make sure everybody's getting them uh, for one, but also at a proper level. Um, a built-in headphone jack. Um, in most cases, a built-in battery pack as well, like we've got on this, this unit here, which we'll talk a little bit more about. Um, and, and in some of the larger instances, having dual power supplies, redundant microphone connections in some of the larger units. So you can wire up two microphones uh, or more and have uh, both of those be fed. Um, switchable mic and line options, obviously. And uh, transformer isolated outputs on every, uh, every single option. And they do uh, one of the unique things that I, uh, I have on the desk here today and I, I like quite a bit is um, um, all of these press boxes have optional uh, cable assemblies and looms to adapt to different cable formats. So they're very handy to adapt to phones, recorders and, uh, and things like that. And that's all stuff that uh, can easily be included with the units. 
And uh, one thing that's very, uh, very new, but a, a unique and an interesting way to do uh, this distribution is via a protocol called Dante. And uh, that allows us to, um, to feed this particular unit here um, with a, a networked audio signal uh, and have it completely uh, powered by the network and just distribute audio that way. So a lot of mixing consoles these days, uh, even in the small form, um, support variations of Dante, and we can take advantage of that to do our, our audio distribution. So a quick look at the front panel of um, what we'll see uh, on, on most of these units. Uh, first and foremost, we have a gain knob. Um, uh, we have a, a pad selection here uh, that gives us a, uh, uh, a selectable mic and line uh, option here, a phantom power option to give us plus 48 volts, a high pass filter, which is um, typically one of the most commonly used uh, uh, functions on a, on a microphone input. A compressor and a limiter, which is a really nice option to make sure we don't exceed the capability of the input circuitry. And if somebody shouts or yells or raises their, their voice to a level higher than uh, we're used to, we have some protection against that before the unit clips. Um, we have a pre-fade listen button where we can um, flip the meter in to uh, pre-fade uh, selection and have a look. And then, of course, we have uh, the bus A and, and bus B, where this basically lets us choose where does the signal go. Does it go to the row of outputs uh, labeled A uh, or B? Or we can send it to both in many cases if we just want to create one large, uh, one large feed. And uh, on the output section, we have a, uh, an after fader listen, an AFL. Uh, we have a built-in oscillator, which is uh, which is quite unique. Um, this is something that um, uh, gives the ability to check levels, of course, and uh, it's typically actuated with a slide switch that you have to hold for five seconds. So it's one of those things that you can put in place when needed, but you don't have to worry about it uh, coming on uh, when you're not expecting it. A built-in headphone jack, and uh, and that's uh, with a with a level control for that as well. For some of the larger and more um, critical applications, um, we do have redundant power supplies uh, where we can feed in a, a main and a, a secondary uh, power switch. We can feed these in two different circuits. Uh, so if for some reason we lose one circuit uh, or uh, one battery backup, we're covered with the other, uh, the other solution. Uh, this of course gives us automatic switching between the two units, so a seamless uh, transition. And then in some of the other more portable units, we have um, power, but with the combination of a built-in battery. Um, so this is a really nice uh, option that allows us to uh, to go out in the field and do things, but also to you know uh, to give us a certain level of resilience, just even with a uh, with standard operation uh, in a facility. Though so if we do lose power, we're covered with the uh, with the battery. And in some cases, um, to go the extra step, we have the option of doing redundant microphone connections to the units. So um, typically any model that has more than one mic input can be used to distribute one or more microphones to the same um, set of outputs so that uh, uh, we, can, we can be covered in, in all cases if, for example, there's an issue uh, with one, one of the two microphones being used. So that's a very nice, uh, a really high and extra level of redundancy. One, uh, one very important function, uh, I've got one of these boxes on the desk here, um, is the ability to provide outputs uh, in both the mic and line format, because inevitably um, doing any kind of press distribution, you're gonna have devices that require um, this or that. And, and a lot of press boxes um, that you'll see out there and a lot of media distribution is, is only one. You know, uh, Typically they'll take a line input and distribute that to uh, eight or more mic outputs. Uh, but if you need one line input uh, and, and, and six um, mic, uh, sorry, one line output and six mic outputs, uh, you're kind of hooped and kind of sometimes have to go to a non-traditional means to get it to work. So uh, most of the audio press box units uh, like this, this, this box here um, have the selection for both of those options, which is uh, very, very uh, functional. Uh, and as a standard function across that with that mic selection, every single one of these outputs is transformer isolated. So um, this is that uh, kind of resiliency thing we spoke about earlier where, um, uh, or you know, the, the, the protection against short circuits where if somebody plugs in a, uh, uh, a camera with a bad ground or uh, a bad cable, for example, that might short the conductors uh, without this transformer isolation, um, we would, most definitely either take out the complete line altogether in everybody's feeds 
uh, or uh, introduce a nice hum or a buzz into the circuit, uh, not only for ourselves, but for most, most everybody else as well. So having that transformer isolation uh, gives us a very split but unique feed for every single one of those outputs. Somebody can short the line on any one of these outputs and it doesn't affect anybody else uh, as part of it. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, the cabling um, with this particular interface here, um, this is kind of a unique uh, situation where uh, a lot of times um, we have a situation where we have a press box and we're feeding a, a number of different units. Um, so all of the units are standard with XLR, um, but iPhones, Android devices, and um, uh, Zoom recorders these days are very common. So Audio Press Box makes a very nice cable set here uh, that adapts these XLR connections to a, uh, a tip ring sleeve stereo jack to plug into your iPhone or your Android. And this is a very nicely made uh, loomed cable um, that can be purchased for use with, uh, with these units. So this is one of uh, many different options, but can be purchased depending on, you know, what, you're, uh, what, you're, what you might be feeding in that day. And of course, uh, we mentioned Dante a few minutes ago. This is a very unique feature that um, allows us to give us a bit more of a sophisticated way to distribute audio, not just locally, but could be over a uh, uh, different rooms in a facility or different areas. And uh, this kind of a protocol is definitely more suited for an installation, but um, we do see it quite often in portable events and, and uh, situations when used with mixing consoles where that, uh, um, where that protocol is used uh, quite frequently these days. So uh, we have six different offerings that allow Dante connectivity uh, to and from the, the units. So I mentioned uh, that most of these units are uh, kind of split between fixed installation and uh, some more portable units. So we're gonna have a quick look at a few of the, uh, the fixed install units and then some of the portables. Before I uh, go any further, does anybody have any questions uh, up until now? Great, I'll, I'll trust you're all sleeping uh, very soundly there. <laughs> um, so within these units, uh, we have two different variations. Um, we have what we call drive units and drive units are basically a, uh, an input box with a uh, sophisticated uh, output mechanism to feed multiple of what we call expander units um, uh, as shown on the right. So the drive units can be standalone. They take an input in and provide an output that would get used with these expanders. But they also, in some cases, like the units on the second on the lower section, uh, provide local outputs as well too. So uh, we have a combination of those, and of course, a few options uh, with these, including uh, Dante. So we're going to have a look at a few different variations and, and run through it. Uh, one of the newest boxes, which unfortunately I was hoping to have here today, but it is caught somewhere in customs at the moment, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, is our uh, 112 in-wall Dante box. Um, so I, I have the uh, throwdown version of this guy right here, uh, but this is a, this is a, uh, an in-wall version of, of that unit um, that provides a, a POE uh, input, a networked input via Dante and 12 uh, mic or line level outputs, transformer isolated, switchable, of course, uh, but something that you can flush mount and, uh, and, and just hide away. So um, this, is, uh, this is something that's been of, of great interest to a lot of um, integrators and consultants, and I think this will do, uh, will do quite well. So we're, we're excited to get our first, uh, first new units. Um, the other option we have is uh, same kind of a, a variant as that, but instead of an in-wall, this is an on-wall box that gets uh, uh, surface mounted to, uh, uh, to a, a wall in cases where you, you might not be able to uh, put something in a wall. Uh, same idea, 12, uh, one Dante input and 12 outputs, mic and line selectable, um, very handy uh, distribution. Um, we have a single and a, a dual channel uh, drive unit. This is the D100 and the D200. Um, so these are those drive units that uh, take an input, condition it, and uh, provide a buffered output set to be fed to uh, a, number of a number of different expanders. So you'll notice in this case, this unit can uh, feed up to 96 uh, microline outputs, uh, which, is, which is quite favorable. Um, 
We do have the same variation, but with the inclusion of Dante. So uh, we take an analog mic input. Um, we can feed analog out, but we also have the ability to feed a Dante output as well, which is uh, really nice because that can then go off to one of these uh, uh, on-wall or throw-down boxes for additional, uh, additional capability. And a combo box is our 116 uh, unit that gives us the ability to do um, an input with some local outputs, but also to feed expanders and have uh, Dante connectivity as well. So uh, you'll notice there's an input, uh, uh, input and output analog uh, with the addition of the, uh, the Dante connectivity. And then again, a same variation, but uh, with two channels. So a double, uh, double selection there. And uh, this guy is a kind of a combo unit, um, the 208R. So it has a built-in two channels um, of, of input and output uh, and a number of matrixing options between the two channels and, uh, and the same kind of idea. So this is a kind of a preview of some of the uh, extension boxes uh, or uh, in-wall and on-wall boxes. So we have a, uh, um, an eight-channel on-wall, eight-channel in-wall solution. Again, very much like the Dante units, they're mic and line selectable. Um, and these can be daisy chained and expanded upon, you know, as required. And uh, obviously different, uh, different colored variations there. These guys are uh, just, um, uh, just uh, not, uh, um, not selectable in this case. So these are meant to be standalone units that would be fed with a uh, line input uh, directly, say from a mixing console and then distributed to uh, uh, these, uh, these mic outputs here. And then the largest unit is the uh, O24, and uh, this gives us 24 discrete uh, outputs uh, as an expansion unit and uh, uh, with mic and line selection right on the front there. A very unique one that I like, uh, one of my most favorites is the uh, in-floor unit. Um, so this is a full, fully functional floor box um, that has a uh, a uh, pop-up lid and uh, does give you the option of um, eight balanced outputs, mic and line selection, and uh, two grouping options as well. So very, uh, very unique and, and handy interface. And then finally, the uh, 116R, uh, it's kind of a more compact but culminated version of, uh, of an expander and a, and a drive unit built into the same, uh, same selection. So the more portable ones, um, these are kind of along the same form, but uh, built to be, be used out in the field. Um, so like the on-wall and the in-wall, we do have a portable unit, which is this, this particular model here. So just a different form factor. We have the handles on the front and um, some feet on the bottom. So it's a bit more ruggedized for, for that kind of a use. Uh, but again, this gives us one Dante input and uh, 12 uh, micro line level outputs. And um, a very popular unit that um, we see uh, move all the time is uh, the uh, 112 SB unit. So this is a, uh, a one input 12 output unit uh, that can be daisy chained and basically just fed, uh, fed from a mixing console. So uh, for us so far, this has been one of the most common units that, um, that we've had the, the pleasure of selling. And then um, we have a, a range of uh, distribution units similar to the in-wall and, and uh, rack mounted units, uh, the 116 SB with a single input and uh, um, 16 outputs. Um, we also have um, these guys, uh, this particular unit here I have on the, the desk here is the 116. Um, so this is a very, uh, very unique option and uh, desktop unit with um, uh, mic and line selections on the front and then the other side actually has uh, um, full, uh, full outputs here. So I've got the uh, 16 outputs that uh, we mentioned on the back side. So it's an easy throw down uh, tabletop unit and um, does come with the, uh, uh, because these are portable units, we do have the battery powered option to, uh, to keep them running or as a, as a backup obviously. And same with this guy, a uh, 24 output uh, version and a, uh, the largest, the uh, 448. So this has got four discrete inputs and um, they can be selected and switched between uh, up to 48 uh, outputs. So uh, for the very large multi-language press conferences. One of my favorites is the 224C. Um, that's the unit I have, uh, I have up in this, uh, this selection here. Um, so uh, I'll have a quick look at this guy here since I got a mic on it. 
do have some audio flowing here, so I'm just going to uh, light it up so you can see it in action. So I've got um, two, uh, two mic inputs here. I've got a gain selection uh, pad and phantom. So in my case, I'm feeding a line level input here from a, um, from a device and uh, feeding that out to these, uh, these outputs here. And I've got my, uh, my metering section here and my gain reduction on my compressor. Um, and then you can see the, uh, the overall uh, uh, metering of the unit uh, as well. So, and uh, as I mentioned, these particular guys uh, being portable units have uh, the battery selection. So um, you can see I'm plugged in with uh, my, uh, sorry, this is backwards for me, <laughs> uh, my wall power here and I'm turned on, but my, uh, my battery is charging there as well in the background and uh, will keep me going when this guy is unplugged uh, or, or vice versa. So this is a very unique box. Um, this is kind of neat in that uh, um, it uh, actually has a top, um, which we've taken off here. So um, this is a Canadian made case, which is kind of neat, but they've actually came out with a variation that allows you to, to remove the lid. Um, so it's very easy to throw down and uh, drop into a, in a, in a tight situation. Uh, and there's also a little pocket here that you can include some cabling or, or anything like that. So uh, that's, that's one of my favorites. And uh, I just, uh, very useful for what it is, two channels. Um, and uh, it gives you a lot of flexibility for, for what it is and for its size. And then uh, kind of as a step up from that, uh, that unit is, um, the 416C, so same same kind of box and same interface, but uh, uh, four discrete inputs and uh, 16 outputs in this case. So um, definitely those uh, simultaneous translation and, and multi-language situations. And uh, another one of my uh, unique favorites too is um, as the 1.32 1 unit. And uh, this comes in a nice Pelican case and gives you one drive unit and four of uh, these uh, uh, APX, uh, sorry, APB uh, uh, eight output units. And uh, so this guy is uh, quite nice because you can have a very discreet half rack um, drive unit uh, located anywhere and then feed off to um, these four expanders and it all comes well packaged and, and kitted in a, uh, a waterproof Pelican case uh, ready to go. So um, very, uh, very useful unit. And of course, because we're using the driver version, you know, we can feed mic and, and line level outputs from each one of these selections and daisy chain multiples off of the, uh, off of the same feed. So, so we're going to look at a few uh, different applications and, um, and just see how uh, some of the different variations are, are used in this case now that we've, we've had a look. So we looked at this, uh, this iteration uh, earlier on, but in this particular case, we've got um, uh, you know four different discrete inputs. Um, so we're using a, a 448 uh, series press box um, that's getting fed from the uh, um, the mixing console there, which is also powering the two uh, local loudspeakers. Uh, and then um, we are using a combination of the uh, the cabling that I, I mentioned earlier. Um, and some additional uh, outputs to feed uh, a, a series of cameras in this case in the um, uh, in the red as line outputs into the cameras. Uh, a couple of them are uh, uh, different language cameras, so they're getting different feeds discreetly uh, in the blue. And then the orange uh, line there you can see is going over to uh, translation um, interpretation uh, a booth for uh, for a dedicated feed as well. So um, you know this one interface covers off uh, all of these uh, different situations. And of course, we still have outputs to feed the trucks outside and, uh, and do the uplinks that way. And in the, the not as complex, but maybe portable variant, um, we have uh, you know, a small press conference with one microphone. Um, then we're using our, uh, basically taking a feed from the mixing console and using our 112 units, uh, similar to this, uh, this guy here, uh, and uh, feeding a series of press tables uh, along with those, uh, those cable sets um, to feed recorders and iPhones and, and things like that. So uh, very simplified, uh, you know, it doesn't need to be any more complicated one of the, than one of these uh, uh, distribution units here, so. And, um, you know, 
where do we see these kind of things? As I mentioned, um, in a lot of cases, these are uh, used a lot in government and, and uh, in our case, provincial, uh, provincial and federal uh, institutions. Um, these are, uh, you know, this particular situation using the 224, obviously, is uh, more of a portable press conference, but in uh, uh, in dedicated press rooms and press facilities, you know, the on-wall and in-wall boxes are, uh, are a great option to keep all of that flexibility and capability uh, pre-wired and ready to go. Oops. Um, and of course, you know, the drive units give you the unique ability to, um, to take a feed of the audio distribution in the rack, typically where it's, uh, where it's fed from, and then also provide uh, distribution to the rest of the building from that one uh, central location. So, um, so yeah, we see it in a number of portable and and uh, uh, and um, and kind of static installs uh, quite regularly, and um, of course, uh, you know, doing some of these impromptu uh, impromptu meetings and gatherings. And then you might get yourself into one of these situations where you have uh, quite a few of our, <laughs> our rack mounted units for, uh, for distribution in a uh, municipal facility. So that's, uh, that's a very unique situation, but something that's uh, very possible and uh, easily handled with the, uh, with the audio, audio press box. And that's, uh, that's it uh, for now. I've got uh, some stuff set up if you, uh, want to uh, have a look at anything specific. Um, I'm feeding some line level audio uh, into a, a Dante interface here. Actually, I've got, uh, we re represent a brand called Glenn Sound and they're a UK uh, manufacturer of uh, audio solutions. So this is a little um, self-powered PoE speaker. Um, so I can feed audio to the speaker itself. Um, I'm also feeding a feed uh, in via Dante um, to the Dante on a throwdown box here. And uh, I'm taking a direct feed into uh, this expander unit here and actually consequently feeding it, uh, feeding it over to, to this guy as well. So uh, it's just a, just a quick uh, glimpse at what we've got running here for you today. <laughs> 